Robotic weapons are a fun and unique way to play 7 Days to Die, but they have a little bit more complexity to use effectively than say a shotgun, which you kind of just point in the general direction of a zombie, close your eyes and squeal, hoping it kills things. Trust me, I'm what we call a firearms expert, and I'm just as proficient with robotics. And today I'm going to be going over the three robotic items in the game, how to use them, how to get them, and how to get the most out of them. One thing to note is I will not be talking about SMG turrets or shotgun turrets. Those are electrical items and they are a trap class weapon rather than a robotic weapon. Robotic weapons will give you full XP for your kills and they do not require a power source, that's the main difference between them. Anyway, let's get into my ultimate robotics guide for 7 days to die, Alpha 20. First up we have the robotic sledge turret. This is the earliest available robotic item and it does one thing. It's a sledgehammer, it hits things. It has a very very good knockdown chance and of course since it doesn't need stamina to use, it's a very useful item to make sure more zombies are on the ground. If you're using a weapon that doesn't have particularly good knockdown itself, like knives or spears. You just have to select it and right click to place it, and it will knock down most zombies that come into range of it. This is really good for Insane Nightmare where knockdowns are very very valuable and can really save you in a pinch if you can get good at placing the turrets. They're not bad for placing them in retreat locations so that if you need to run away you can lead zombies right into a primed sledgehammer hit. And a couple things to note is that they are limited by the fact that they can't move, they can only attack any wide cone in front of them, they don't do much damage themselves, but they can really set you up to do a lot of damage yourself, especially with clubs which actually do bonus damage to downed enemies if you have a few ranks of pummel heat. You should definitely mod this thing with a weighted head and a burning shaft. The weighted head will increase the knockdown chance as sometimes the turret won't fully knock down enemies and that can be a real pain so this will just increase the chance that it does knock them down. And the burning shaft will just kind of make up for the turret's kind of terrible base damage. Otherwise though you can just throw on whatever you want to increase that base damage a little bit more. To craft a level 5 robotic sledge turret you're going to need 12 robotic parts, 120 forged iron, 30 duct tape, 30 scrap polymer and 30 springs. Which isn't too hard to get, all things considered. The big brother of the sledge turret is the robotic turret. This one fires robotic turret ammo at enemies it sees in front of it. You will need to pick them up and reload them yourself though. The amount of ammo you can put in them is actually governed by the robotics inventor perk, which at the final rank will let you add an extra 50 rounds to the turret's ammo reserves and you can use a drum magazine to double their capacity. And these things are mean. Don't underestimate how useful having an extra gun watching your back or giving you covering fire can be, especially in single player. You pair these with a stun baton and you can just do crowd control while the turret handles all the damage for you. For mods you'll definitely want to get yourself a drum magazine for the double ammo capacity and you'll want a full auto mod to get the 12% faster fire rate. Everything else is less important. This takes the same stuff to craft as a regular sledge turret, but instead of 120 forged iron, you'll need 40 forged steel. The ammo these turrets use is called robotic turret ammo and it's made purely from iron. The ammo piercing version will do more damage, ignore 50% of armor and will hit two targets instead of one, but it will cost you more iron and these things really eat through that ammo so it can become quite expensive iron wise, but iron does come in twice the quantities of any other material in the game so it's very easy to keep a lot of iron around and you won't have to bother with things like gathering coal and nitrate to make gunpowder or having to smell any brass, you just take raw scrap iron that you dig out of the ground and turn it into ammunition. I really do advise using the armor piercing ammo as well as more expensive, it really melts through zombies. There's also robotic shotgun ammo which does take one iron and one buckshot. I've never personally had much use for them. AP has always been good enough to wipe out anything they face for me and the added annoyance of having to make buckshot is kind of just not worth it for me. If I'm making buckshot it's going towards a shotgun. The last robotic item is the robotic drone. This thing is a little different from the turrets, it isn't a weapon, instead it's more of a companion. By default it'll have 16 inventory slots which is really the main appeal of the drone right now. You can shut it up by holding E and pressing the quiet mode and it also has some basic companion commands like stay and follow. 
Just like any other item, at level 6 it will have 4 mod slots, and mods are where the drone shines. You can give it more armour with the armour plating mod, which isn't incredibly helpful from what I've ever seen. The only time the drone ever takes damage is from cop and vulture spit, or if other players are shooting at it. If either of those are a concern, you can put armour on it to make it more durable. You can also use the medic mod. The medic mod will let the drone automatically heal you when you take a certain amount of damage. It can use first aid bandages or first aid kits, but they must be in the drone's inventory. But the drone does not benefit from the physician perks, so the amount healed from that will not be increased by that perk. There's also the headlamp mod, which is just a big light, and there is a stamina booster, which will give you a 10% boost to stamina regen. The real mod, the only real mod, is the cargo mod. You can stack four cargo mods on a level 6 drone, each of which will give you 8 more inventory slots, which totals up to 48 inventory slots on the drone. And yes, this is the only mod I ever use on the drone, it is a glorified backpack. Be warned though, these things can be a little bit buggy, especially on servers, so it's never a good idea to put any very critical items in there, because there's always a chance that it decides to just disappear on you. But 95% of the time, especially in single player, you should be okay. If you want to be extra safe when you're playing single player and multiplayer and want to make sure your drone doesn't go missing, it's a good idea to pick the drone up when you log off, as logging in and logging out, teleporting and driving seem to be the main things that cause the drone to break. Now all of these robotic items are governed by the Robotics Inventor perk, which is a 5 rank intellect perk, maxing out at 10 intellect. Each rank increases the damage, fire rate and capacity of the turrets. It also extends the distance you can get from the turrets before they automatically turn off. By default, you can only have one turret at a time, but with the final rank, you'll be able to have two turrets active at a time. Whether you want two sledges, two regular turrets, or one of each, you can do that with the final rank of Robotics Inventor. It's worth noting though that the drone does not count towards your robotics cap, and it's also not boosted by the perk. You can only ever have one drone, unless the game bugs and happens to spawn you a clone, in which case congratulations you have two drones, but the one drone doesn't count against your turret limit. Currently then, in Alpha 20, the only benefit the perk has for drones is increasing your crafting quality of the drones, with level 4 Robotics Inventor currently letting you craft a level 5 drone. But in Alpha 21, crafting is being reworked, so it's very possible the Robotics Inventor perk will do literally nothing for the drone. So if all you want is the drone, don't go wasting points in Robotics Inventor. The Tech Junkie skill books will give you some bonuses for the turrets as well, allowing you to do more damage, degrade slower, craft the additional two ammo types, increase your fire rate and allow you to bulk craft the ammo types 20% cheaper. Pretty good, but again, no real benefit for the drone if that's what you're interested in. The best way to use your sledge turret by far is during Horde Night. They're a really great way of moving zombies somewhere you want them to be. They can knock zombies off bridges, into traps, or just generally away from you. Be warned though, they can sometimes set off demolition buttons. The best way to avoid it is to keep the turret low down from the zombie and keep it on the opposite side of where the button is going to be on the demo's chest. Even then, you're kind of risking it, so I just avoid these on Horde Night when demos start spawning. Another thing to consider is that if a zombie takes fall damage, they'll go into destroy area mode, where they stop going for you and attack the blocks around them. Having a bunch of sledge turrets knocking zombies into a fall could lead to a lot more structural damage than what you might expect. Robotic turrets are also good on Horde Knight, they're very very efficient at clearing the non-demolition zombies, but they will also hit demo buttons, so you may want to retire them for that purpose when demos start spawning as well. If we ignore demos for a second, robotic turrets are one of the most useful things you can have on Horde Knight for shredding through hordes. The ammo is extremely cheap and the turrets can spit it out very, very quickly, especially if you have two of them. But the robotic turrets are also fantastic POI clearing weapons. If you set up two in a room and lure zombies into that room, the zombies will get absolutely liquefied by these turrets, especially if you accompany it with your own weapons for maximum effectiveness. The major thing you need to worry about when doing POIs with these though is heat generation. Having three guns firing instead of just one is going to generate a lot of extra heat, so expect to see more screamer zombies using these. But 
they're definitely worth the extra screamers and at the end of the day a screamer horde here and there is just more xp for you which lets you become stronger anyway as for the drone fill it with cargo mods stuff it full of junk tell it to shut up and pretend it doesn't exist and hope it doesn't leave you and take half your stuff randomly like your ex-wife it's a very annoying backpack but 48 inventory slots is very helpful. So that was everything you need to know about robotics in 7 Days to Die. If you want some more in-depth 7 Days to Die content, why not check out my ultimate medical guide to know everything there is to know about 7 Days to Die injuries and medicine. Consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button for more 7 Days to Die content. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making this video possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.